Spider-Man No Way Home has quickly become one of the most successful movies in the history of the MCU, and with its titular cast of characters coupled with fantastic writing, this is really no surprise. That being said, you might be shocked to hear that there was actually some improvisation on set. So who improvised what, and which other famous scenes have been revealed to be off the cuff? For all this and more, stay tuned. First things first, let's look at the Doctor Strange reveal that has everyone talking. For those of you who don't know, Benedict Cumberbatch just turned some heads by admitting to the fact that he improvised one of the most important scenes in Spider-Man No Way Home. The actor, who is best known for his portrayal of the enigmatic Doctor Strange, recently spoke to Collider, who asked him which scenes he was most excited for the public to see when the film came out. This led Cumberbatch to talk about a particular time on set when Tom Holland was having trouble with the ending scene. You see, after saving the villains of the franchise from themselves and refusing to doom them to death, Spider-Man looks up to see the sky breaking apart. He's then informed by Strange that the multiverse is actually breaking through into their reality, something that unfortunately can't be stopped. But then Peter Parker comes up with a plan and tells Strange to rather overwrite the spell with another, one that makes everyone in the multiverse forget who he is. It's a heartbreaking scene to say the least, and according to Cumberbatch, his character couldn't go ahead without first letting Peter know just how much he cared for him. And so, when the time came, he improvised the scene in which he included himself as one of the people who know and love him. He also decided to hit Holland with the call me Steven moment, which resulted in John Watts applauding and saying, that's gonna be in the film. Evans and Hemsworth were also responsible for an improvised Marvel moment, something that was no doubt helped by just how much fun the teammates were having on the set of Avengers Infinity War. Remember, this was the penultimate end to the Infinity Saga, and the writers knew that by the end of the film, fans were going to be shocked to their very cores. As a result, even the high-intensity action of the finale was tempered with some fantastic humor. Moments like these are usually developed in the writing room, though, in an effort to ensure that the perfect delivery is made on the day. You don't want to give the cast too much space to improvise, especially since so many fans are leaning on each and every word being uttered. But in the Wakanda fight scene towards the end of the film, Chris Hemsworth decided to try his luck, and the Russo brothers couldn't help but keep the scene locked in the final copy of the film. We are, of course, referring to Thor's first interaction with Captain America after years of being off-world. After peering over at him and noticing the beard Steve Rogers had grown, Thor responds by saying, I noticed you copied my beard. This is pretty hilarious, considering how not even Thor was responsible for the way he looked in the later portions of the franchise. Remember, he received an overhaul in Thor Ragnarok, which saw Jeff Goldblum's character, the Grandmaster, cutting his hair and giving him a new look. For our next off-the-cuff moment, we have turned to Django Unchained, a critically acclaimed film from Quentin Tarantino that featured Jamie Foxx as a slave-turned-gunslinger. But it wasn't Foxx who turned heads that day with his outburst on set. According to reports, Leonardo DiCaprio was the one responsible for one of the most recognizable moments in the movie. And as it turns out, this was all improvised on set. You see, DiCaprio was playing a character by the name of Calvin Candy. The representation of wealth and ownership in a film is undoubtedly against the concepts. So it goes without saying that DiCaprio was asked to be as villainous as he possibly could be. When Django visits Calvin on his large farm, things start out well. But as time goes on and our hero notices that the owner is quite nefarious in his behavior, the tension starts to build. This results in a shocking moment when Calvin, after becoming angry over something Django has said, goes on to break a glass by smashing it against the table. And with blood still pouring down his hand, he looks on at the heroic character with malice in his eyes. But you might be surprised to hear that this was 100% unscripted. Leonardo DiCaprio actually broke the glass by mistake out of anger and cut himself in the process. Like a true legend, though, he pushed through the pain and brought us one of the most memorable movie moments in the history of cinema. Now that's called acting. Oh, and who can forget Harrison Ford's love scene in The Empire Strikes Back? It's crazy to think Harrison Ford was a carpenter until the later years of his life in which he fell into acting. He's responsible for playing one of the most beloved characters on screen in the form of Han Solo. And there's not a single Star Wars fan who can imagine the first trilogy without him. For those of you who preferred Star Trek, though, allow us to remind you that Han Solo was the real rebel of the franchise. He was a smuggler turned hero, after all. And although he always did the right thing, he made sure to inform everyone that he would rather be doing something else. It's this attitude that allowed fans to resonate with him. But you may be surprised to discover that George Lucas actually wanted a prominent scene to go rather differently. When Han is caught by Jabba the Hutt and turned over to be frozen in carbonite, Princess Leia turns to him and says, I love you. According to the script, Han was supposed to react in kind, but Harrison Ford didn't believe that this would be in line with who the character actually was. So he responded with a heartfelt, I know, showing that even then, Han wasn't able to change his rebellious nature. 
When asked about the improvised scene a couple years back, Ford actually mentioned just how easy it was, since Carrie Fisher was just 19 at the time, and he was much older. Another memorable improvised scene can be found in The 40-Year-Old Virgin, a comedy that was spearheaded by Steve Carell and featured some rather awkward and hilarious moments. Coming from the American adaptation of The Office, Carroll has always been known for his off-the-cuff moments, and director Judd Apatow knew that it would serve the film best to have Carell responsible for any additions he wanted to make to the script. But even he shocked everyone when he looked at a waxing scene and decided to actually participate in the act while filming. That's right, rather than pretend to have hot wax poured on him and then ripped off, Carell made the call to be prepped in front of the cameras. And looking at how hairy he was at the time of filming, we're guessing this was the first time he'd ever been waxed before. Suffice to say, the actor didn't know just how terrible this experience would be for him. And when asked about the moment years later, he responded that there's no way he would ever do it again. But there's no doubt that this is one of the most memorable moments in the history of film. He gives such a believable reaction to being waxed for the first time on account of everything being done for real, and utters some of the funniest improvised lines in reaction to the hurtful process he was being put through. We commend you, Steve Carroll, and sincerely hope you don't have PTSD from the experience. Lastly, let's talk about Gene Wilder in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Although many from the new generation think of Johnny Depp when they hear the name Willy Wonka, it was Gene Wilder who first portrayed the character in the original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and there was something fantastical about the way he brought the peculiar character to life. After investing rather heavily in the role, he looked at the introduction of Wonka and decided to change some things, though. And luckily for us, the director decided to keep it in the film. We are, of course, referring to that unexpected moment in which Willy Wonka meets everyone at the gate of his chocolate factory with a cane and a limp. When he finally reaches the audience, though, he falls forward into a somersault and springs to life, showing that he was actually faking the whole ordeal. According to Wilder, this would show you that you could never actually trust Willy Wonka, a character who was constantly telling half-truths. And there you have it, some of the most memorable improvised moments in the history of film. Which one was your favorite, though? And do you know of any others that we forgot to mention on our list? Be sure to let us know in the comments section down below.